After looking at a bunch of character models from popular games and checking out their jiggle physics setups, I realized that it's actually not that complicated. So for those of you looking to double major in physics and goonology, this is all you need to replicate that in-game jiggle in your very own basement. So first of all, let's talk topology. Does it really matter whether it's radial or non-radial? I've seen games use either or, and I've seen both used in the same game on different models. And having worked with both myself, I can safely say that this doesn't really matter, as long as the mesh has decent shape and even spacing. And how about density? I also think that this doesn't matter too much. This model's relatively dense, and this model here has low enough density to be used on low-end mobile devices and has non-radial topology. Yet, in-game, those physics do be looking quite sophisticated. Know what I'm saying? Like, them things be jiggling. So it's clear that those are not the most important things. I'd say the magic is mostly in the rigging, so let me show you how these rigs are weighted and how to recreate it in Blender. So this one's one of my favorites. Not only the character itself, but also how simple and effective the rig is. I've isolated the important bones here, and we've just got the upper spine bone, and the breast bones are just a chain of two bones. We got that lance setup going on, it's pointing a little bit upwards. And they did get a little fancy with how it's like bigger than the actual body itself when usually the bone would just be in the breast. All it does is add a little stability to the rig. That's it. Now all you really need to know, the first bone here, it's got the whole breast on a light blue greenish weight and it pretty much covers the whole breast. The second bone in the chain is mostly weighted towards the center, goes all the way to the yellow weight here in the center, and the key here is that these weights are normalized. So, we take a look at the upper spine bone, which the breasts are parented to, we'll see that the part it doesn't have weight over, those are evenly distributed among those two breast bones. And while that may look complicated, this is actually extremely easy to set up within Blender. I'll show you that in a second. I'm just gonna pivot over to this other model which has a more complicated setup, but it's using the exact same fundamentals. So as you can see, we got the upper spine bone. It controls the upper chest, but not the breast itself because we've got that two bone setup where this one has the whole breast, and then this one at the end controls the center and the tip of the breast, just like the last one that we saw. Now how about the other three bones for each breast in this setup? Is it really necessary to have five bones per boob? And don't worry, we'll get to that. So for now, let's take our ever so willing original character and give her the gotcha game physics makeover. Follow along, you'll need of course a rigged body mesh. It's perfectly fine if you rigged it with automatic weighting. The upper spine bone controls all of the chest, I don't add my jiggle bones until later, which I'll show you as well. You'll also need to download and install the wiggle bone add-on if you haven't done so already. Now let's head over to edit mode with our rig, and I recommend to turn on x-axis mirror. So we're here in edit mode with our rig, let's shift A, add a bone, and move it up. Straight up vertically along the z-axis. We'll have it facing the same direction as the breast and tilted slightly upward. In that middle menu where it says global, we'll change that to normal. Then we'll press E, Y to extrude along the tip of the first bone right along the y-axis. Then after you're done, you can change it back from normal to global. So now that that's aligned from the side, let's make sure it also aligns from the back and move it over a bit to the right. Now we're going to parent the first bone of this chain to the upper spine bone. So select it, shift select the spine bone, press Control p to parent and keep the offset. Now if you didn't turn on x-axis mirroring like me, that's okay, select the two bones and symmetrize them. And to do that you need to put dot .r in front of your bone names. And that's it for creating the breast bones. Now we can go to object mode, select our rig, shift select our mesh, press control tab and enter weight paint mode. Then select that first bone in that breast chain. These are the brush settings to make sure we paint both sides at the same time. Make sure to tick auto normalize. This will steal the weight from the upper spine bone as we paint. I set my brush weight to 0.5 and click the other bone to see if the mirroring is working. It is, so I proceed to paint the entire breast. And this first bone will cover exactly the entire area of the breast. 
I check my upper spine bone to see auto normalize has worked. The weight has gone from yellow to green, meaning the breast bone has taken some of the control as expected. Let's move on to our second bone, which will control the center tip of the breast. So change the weight to 0.7 and paint in that center area. Then I change to 0.9 and paint the very center so that there's a nice gradient going on. I then use a smooth function for both sides for both bones. Alternatively, you can also use the blur brush. As you can see, Auto Normalize has made it so that that center bone has taken control from the first breast bone and the upper spine bone as intended. So that's it. Our weight painting is now using the same principles as the model we just saw. So now let's head over to pose mode so that we can tick wiggle bone and activate the jiggle physics. The most important parameters here are stiffness of the jiggle bones, not your bone, which determines how jiggly the bone is. And dampening is simply how fast the bone returns to its original position. So higher is less jiggly and lower equals more jiggly. You'll also need to go to this tab over here and turn on wiggle scene. Jiggle physics only occur if your timeline is playing. If you follow these steps and you move your character around but it's not jiggling, then save and restart Blender. The plugin is just clunky sometimes. It's best to test out the physics on actual animations. So I've had this walk animation set up. I've actually adjusted the speed of the walk cycle so she's walking fast enough where it will jiggle the chest. I've set it up so that the breast bones in front have slightly more jiggle to them. And that makes sense because it is farther out from the body at that point. Now I'd say one of the hard parts is you'll probably have to adjust the jiggle amount depending on the animation. I've yet to find the magic values where I can just use it for any animation. The top value is stiffness and the bottom value is dampening. And I don't know about you, but I prefer a subtle jiggle like this. Actually, I don't even know if that's subtle according to general standards. The lower the values go, the crazier it gets. There is a point where you can go too low with the values and it'll just end up looking weird unless you tweak some of the other values like gravity. And at some point you'll realize the answer is not to add more jiggle, but add dimensionality to the jiggle. And that's where Evelyn got us. Back to that battle cruiser jiggle physics setup that we were looking at. Again, we've got the spine and the two breast chain. This third one in the chain at the start is not really needed. It's more of just an organizational bone. It doesn't actually have any weight to it. What matters is these two additional bones, one on the top and one on the outer side of the breast. These two are jiggle enhancement bones. Two important things to notice here, they are not parented to this bone, but to the one above it. So if you want, you can add this third bone to your setup, but one other thing you can just do is parent it to the spine bone instead. But the second important thing about these bones is that they are not normalized unlike these two bones. These two bones are additive, so let's not make them steal from these original bones that we have. Now that we know that, let's upgrade our setup. In edit mode with x-axis mirroring on, I'm gonna select the first bone in the breast chain and press shift D to duplicate it. Let's move it up here to the top of the breast, shrink it slightly, angle it upward slightly, then let's duplicate it again and put the new pair on the side of the breast. So the one on top will be upward slightly and the one on the side will be outward slightly. And just like that, we've added a pair of jiggle enhancer bones to each breast. Now in weight paint mode, it's gonna be the same brush settings except auto normalize will be off. For the top bone, I set weight to 0.45. I paint this small circle area and I blur that in. And for the side, it's gonna use the same weight and the same thing, that small side area, paint a circle there and blur that in as well. So in the end, these areas are not gonna be weighted very heavily. It's gonna have that light blue weight and our original weight setup should not be touched by these new bones. Because again, these two bones are additive. They are jiggle enhancers. That's why we turn off auto normalize because we don't want it to interfere with the base movement. So if we haven't lost you yet, then the final setup would be looking something like this. And pause here if you need the wiggle bone values. Now the difference this makes is kind of subtle, but I'll leave the comparison here on screen for you to judge for yourself. It adds a little more volume to the top and sides of the breast, but more importantly it adds a little variation to the way it jiggles. Because before we only had one bone chain, and so it's really just jiggling in one direction at a time, or rather one dimension at a time. But now we have three different bone chains which we've changed the direction of each one just a little bit, as well as the values of it. And so now there's levels to it and it looks a little more random. And again, it's hard to describe the exact effect you're getting, but it does make a difference. Now, obviously, you'll have to find a way to like constrain this so that it doesn't go crazy. My personal solution would probably be 
to bake them for each specific animation using different values for each one. Well, I hope you enjoyed these pointers. It's about time for me to bounce. Good night.